Our story begins today in intensive care, where the patient lies unconscious, and the doctors have been trying to save his life for several hours in a row. But he is still bleeding heavily and his pressure is dropping. The doctors do start to panic a little and ask the assistants to quickly bring a bag of blood for transfusion and apply a clamp to stop the bleeding. They all begin to look at the monitor, which indicates that the heart rate has fallen below normal. It is really very, very difficult for the patient now. That it looks like the iron they removed earlier caused a very severe infection, which made the surgeon very surprised and nervous, as he did not understand how this was possible. But there was practically no time to think, because if they continue to delay, then a cardiac arrest will occur and the patient will die, so it is necessary to resuscitate the heart and lungs. In the meantime, the apparatus began to show very disappointing indicators. And indeed, this corresponded to the fact that the patient was already on the verge of death. Then one of the assistants turned to the doctor and told him the disappointing news that the patient's heart had completely stopped, so they had just lost him. No matter how hard he tried to contain his emotions, but he did not succeed. He needed to be informed that the patient was no longer alive, all due to the fact that he remembered the words of his mother, who approached the doctor before the operation and asked if everything would be fine with her boyfriend. He really did not know how to react to this and how to approach his mother and report such sad news. He remembered how she cried and begged to help him, and also talked about how much he suffered because of such a stupid mother. He also remembered that she told him that this is the only son and the only reason and purpose for which she lives on this earth at all. The doctor once again looked at the patient, who continued to lie under anesthesia and did not breathe at all. In addition, he replayed the words of the patient's mother dozens of times and very reluctantly closed his eyes and exhaled deeply. On the operating table, in Stichera, they lowered their hands into their hands and continued to look at the patient making a moment of silence. They recorded the patient's time of death and the underlying cause, an infection from a wound that resulted in brain death due to excessive bleeding. The patient was already unconscious and indeed he did not need an anesthesia tube. Meanwhile, his mother was sitting in the waiting room, praying that the operation would be really successful. She continued to cry and did not know how she could help her son so she had no choice but to hope for a positive result during the operation. At that moment, the doors opened and one of the doctors came out. This surprised everyone else very much because the operation is not over yet. So it was arrogance. Therefore, the chief surgeon ordered everyone to quickly return to their seats, as well as prepare a logbook and the patient's vital signs. The doctor immediately ordered the blood transfusion to be speeded up as well, and also said to check the metal object removed from the patient's body. And also, since there were enough necessary instruments on the table, the doctor decided to suggest another test for Titanus. The doctor also took off his mask, which is strictly forbidden to do in operating rooms. But the thought began to visit him that they really still have an excellent chance to save the patient. At that moment, all surgeons were surprised because is there any point in operating on an already dead patient? But the doctor was resolute and said that now everything is really different. Probably the rumors about this doctor have not yet reached him. He was special because he always took on the most difficult tasks and saved the lives of those people who could not be returned, although he went all the time without a mask. No one even guessed until recently about his abilities. But when he arrived, the operation resumed again, because he is the one who can even pull out the dead from the next world, and all this in the literal sense of the word. His name was Shin Yu Sun. He is also better known by the nickname God Hands, so he also decided not to waste time, and wearing his mask, he proceeded to the operation. Really, some magical processes began on the cardiogram and the heartbeat gradually began to recover, which was really hard to believe. After a few hours of work, after all, the operation was a success, 
and in the operating room, everyone began to scream and rejoice together, because it was really an excellent job, after which the patient was saved. And after a hard day, you really need to relax somehow, so the doctor took a can of drink and opened it. He decided to relax a little and have a drink, as he was really tired after the operation, and he also realized that he would spend his entire vacation in the hospital again. When he came out of it and looked at the excellent view of the city, he realized that he really had not had a normal rest for a very long time. Again, today, he spent the whole day in the operating room, despite the fact that he had a day off. He looked at the sky and did not understand why life is so cruel. At that moment, a big announcement also appeared, which tells us that these are indeed the hands of a god. It was already dark, but his nickname was given for a reason. But all because he can save even dead people. As he himself reports, at first he even liked it, and his main motivation was the joy that formed after saving the dying, as this is really a talent to pull people out of the other world. However, he lay in his bed and was really in pain, all due to the fact that he did not have time to rest at all, after various rumors that spread throughout the city. Now every time he is entrusted with the treatment of really very important and wealthy patients whose lives must be saved, it is mistaken for portable medical devices that can be used at any time. But he understood that he would not last so long. So something was needed and life. He looked with his tired eyes at his hands and he was really interested in understanding what the title of the hand of God, which he was presented with, means. It's really not easy. Because because of this, all the doctors began to be afraid of him and avoid him. So now it has become more like a mockery. He took a deep breath and really decided to think about when was the last time he rested and did not work under supervision and pressure. Choosing the next can of soda, he understood that at least he would earn a lot of money, but he didn't have time to even spend it. He smiled and looked at the bottom, realizing that perhaps you are some moment of your life. He still turned the wrong way, so as soon as he returns home, he will drink another can of beer and relax a bit. Suddenly, a bus drove sharply at him at great speed, which the guy obviously did not see while he was moving straight in his direction. The headlights began to dazzle his glasses, and, as he himself liked to say, when a person dies, his whole life flashes before his eyes. This is exactly what happened to our hero he really began to remember all his most interesting and intimate moments. But basically, everything that he had in his thoughts, as well as his whole practical life, was spent in the operating room. He even himself really became very interested. Why does he see only memories from the operating room? But there was already critically little time for reflection, and his bag flew into the air right from his hands and almost immediately a white, bright flash appeared, which informed the whole world that the brilliant surgeon was no longer alive. Meanwhile, the weather was really very good outside. Everything was happening in the ancient city, the building of which was very similar to a castle. Out of the leaves, someone started screaming and calling out to a guy named Ray. It was the name of our surgeon, who still could not understand whose voice it was. The girl noticed that he seemed to be trying to open his eyes now. But didn't he die? The surgeon looked at his hands, which really rejuvenated a lot, and was very surprised by this, because he did not understand what was wrong with them. At that moment, his new family approached him, who noticed that the guy had already woken up. They were very happy about this. Ray was really very surprised, and it seems he began to understand what had just happened. The family continued to rejoice and hug their child, rejoicing in every moment. Because how can a child be so sweet when awake? In addition, his new father reported that the guy really looks very much like his mother, which is why he is so cute. She continued to hug her son and was really very happy. But the guy himself really didn't to like it, because he absolutely could not understand what was happening to him now. But the only question that tormented him at that moment 
while the new environment looked at him, was why is he still alive? And while he was trying to figure out who all these people who were starting to squeeze him were, the girl made a remark to the guy, saying that he should do everything much more gently, as it could hurt the child. The surgeon did not understand what kind of small body he had. Why everyone wants to squeeze it very hard. Was he really reborn as the child of these two? And after analyzing the situation, he realized that then these people look like his parents. But what kind of clothes are they wearing? Are they cosplayers? The girl took her child in her arms and began to apologize to him for the fact that dad hurt him a little with his beard, from which the child had a small cut. They looked at his hand and were very frightened, just like the child who noticed that his hand was injured. Panic very much after he learned that Ray had hurt himself. He offered to call a priest to heal him. It was really obvious that he was panicking and had never had any experience with a child. But the girl reassured him and said that it was just a scratch and there was nothing wrong with that. She put it on the surface and said that she herself could cure him without problems, which surprised the child very much. I wonder how she is trying to cure him. Most importantly, from what? He looked at her eyes and at the surface and said that she herself could cure him without any problems, which surprised the child very much. I wonder how she is trying to cure him. Most importantly, from what? He looked into her eyes and began to study even more superficially. Is she really a doctor too? And then he realized that, in fact, the ointment can leave a scar, but he did not know how I could tell about it. But the girl used her magic and, without touching the child at all, created a magical power that began to heal his hand. He was very surprised because she immediately healed, which he had never seen before, for all the time of his work as a surgeon. At this moment, he once again analyzed his hand and looked at it, and realized that this is not medicine, so it means magic? And his mother began to laugh and said that the operation was over, and the wound really didn't seem to exist. The guy looked at his hand and was very happy, just like his parents, because not a single trace of the wound was visible at all. The girl began to laugh and said that she had said that she could handle it herself, thanks to this. Her father exhaled heavily with relief and said that she had not yet lost her magical abilities. And the surgeon, having heard that the word magic had just sounded, concluded that it looks like now he is a completely different person and has he really been reborn in another world? Well, in the meantime, it was already getting dark outside and the whole family began their preparation for bed. Parents decided to put a small child to bed but he could not sleep for a very long time as he thought about his new business and the meaning of life. He woke up a few hours later and was very alert and also noticed the fact that he hadn't slept in such a long time. Three months have passed since he was reborn in this world and during this time he understood a lot from their conversations. This world is really completely different from the world in which the surgeon lived before, as if it were a fantasy world this is where the lives of monsters and people begin at the same time, as well as other creatures that fight with each other. Because of this, people can be attacked at any time by monsters and various orcs. The villagers also say that they have to develop their strength and dedicate themselves to their chosen profession from a young age. Meanwhile, my mother approached Ray and decided to cure him. Another feature of this world magic which is developed here instead of science whenever seen heals a child's wounds he always resorts to magic not medicine as was the case before in his world it really was a very amazing life that the surgeon really deserved he managed to realize that everything where he is now is not a dream but really a new reality but for some reason the memories and knowledge of his past life are also well preserved. He continued to sit in bed and look at the moon, because never before had he even thought that he was so lazy and likes to sleep. Come to think of it, in his past life, he didn't even have a normal time for simple sleep. 
If he hadn't died in an accident, then he probably would have died from overwork, because the work of a surgeon is really a very difficult thing. And now, having been reborn, he can absolutely not think about it and rest exactly as much as he needs. When else will he have the chance to sit back and do nothing so much? Well, in the meantime, the night was coming to an end, and there was a very beautiful pot with an unusual plant on the windowsill. It seems that he was also covered with magic, because he constantly attracted something to himself, and it was very strange. But in the meantime, white pimples scattered throughout the room, and while the guy was sleeping, everyone also continued to fly in the direction of that same magical plant. And he absolutely could not understand what it was. It was like a thin thread that pierced his body. There was such a light feeling that this is something incredible, because after 10 minutes of such a dream, the guy already felt very cheerful. Maybe this is the same mana that his parents were talking about? Having tried to manage it, the surgeon realized that it was really very difficult. And every time he tried to make her move, she just flew around. At this point, the guy still tried to focus on where the flow of mana begins and ends, since it really is no different from blood. If you imagine that it flows through his veins, then you can immediately feel how it will begin to fully fill his body. It was truly an infinite energy that was truly an art to master. But you really need to do this very, very slowly. Slowly, slowly, trying to feel every breath and every movement of the body, like a leaf that floats on water. Or as if you are in a winter region, watching snowflakes fly in the wind. And it's really very difficult. But only through this diligent process, the first magical flame can appear from the hand. And finally, he succeeded. After such long years of training, he was able to prove to himself and for the first time created fire from his hand. He was very proud of himself because he really could do it. He even began to cry because at last he was able to use fire magic and he managed to direct mana in the right direction. It took him three whole years of hard work to do this. Somehow he managed to direct the flow of mana and remember the whole process. Remember absolutely everything that he read in books late at night. Only the only thing he didn't understand was the mana management manual. So far, it was really very difficult for him. The method that was described in the book is the principle of accumulation of mother in the body and its rational use. And if it is replenished from the outside, then why should he accumulate it in the body? In addition, Accumulating mana within yourself and then using it has some limitations because no matter how you look at it, this is not an inefficient way to use it. The guy continued to read books to study this issue and now he became interested. What if he prefers to use it freely, not trying to restrain it? After all, it is really much better to restore mana from the outside and immediately spend it. Thus, the need for mana circles will disappear, and he was able to come to this conclusion completely on his own, in his youth. But it is also the most dangerous method that is not described in any book. But it is definitely worth it. Even if the guy said that, he didn't even know if he would succeed. He thought he would have to do some more research on the subject. His parents were really surprised how a child can read so many books in his free time, but they were also very happy for him. It's really wonderful to see. They were very proud of him because their main task was to raise a very good person out of him, as well as an equally strong magician. His father was very surprised because with such a physique, a guy can definitely become a good swordsman. But his wife got ahead of him because in this case, their baby Ray will turn into the same mountain of muscles like his father himself. He got a little angry about this but at least said that he was handsome. Well, the guy continued to read books in his spare time and study all the information about this Manu, but he still couldn't understand why the parents were hiding, if they were still talking so loudly. Anyway, the mother began to suspect a little something was wrong, so she turned to her husband and asked, 
Does it not seem strange to you that he only does what he reads? But this question confused him a little. What does she already mean? They looked at the guy again and said that ordinary children of his age want to play and walk on the street. But it seems to him that he is only interested in books. Well, he did not see any problem in this and said that the mother should not worry. Isn't it good that he likes to study? In addition, she herself said that she wants to grow an excellent magician out of him. The girl looked at him and really agreed with this, although she did not say anything. But the guy heard all this and realized that he was still very far from this calling, so he needed to study very, very much. He continued to absorb one book after another, because he needed to finally learn how to restore his mana, moreover, to perfection. Another night passed in the process of studying books and the long-awaited morning came. His mother entered the room with a smile and greeted her child. But suddenly he continued to sit in the study of the book and told his mother that he woke up a long time ago and continues to read, which she really started to cry and get a little nervous. Of course, reading books and learning is great. But in any case, he should frolic enough before he grows up. At that moment, the mother looked at her child once again and began to think that perhaps she really devotes little time to him. And then tears began to flow from her thoughts, because she had really been crying a lot lately. She walked up to her boyfriend and sat down across from him, asking if he wanted to play with his mom today. But this question turned out to be really much more difficult than one could imagine. So he surprised the guy. His eyes lit up. Was she really going to teach him magic? He was very happy with this offer because she wants to educate her child through children's games. So he shouted and got up from his seat, said that he really wanted this very much and dreamed of going to play with her. But the mother herself saw something wrong and it alarmed her very much. She ran up and hugged her son very tightly realizing that he was very happy, which means that he had been waiting for this opportunity for a very long time. Well, the guy at that moment just endured all these hugs. He looked at his mother and just could not understand what she wants to do now. They went for a walk with her and it was not at all what he expected. He told her that there were no books here, so why did they come here? But mom told him to put all the books aside today so they will go outside and play better there. But Ray had completely different plans for today, saying that he would better go and do more and thanked for this opportunity. He didn't understand what was going on now. Why should he waste time playing games instead of practicing? The mother was very happy, because how can their baby say such beautiful words? Indeed, it is simply a delight to the ears of the mother of every child. She suggested that at least today he should go and unwind a little. But the guy was very surprised by this because he didn't go out all the time and also didn't he plan to do it at all. But the mother insisted and asked only once to have fun with her on the street. And he hadn't really gone out since he was reborn. All his time was spent in the library and learning new skills. He didn't even know what the outside world looked like so he smiled and immediately agreed, but just for once. That's great, then move forward right now. And when they had already left, the guy constantly looked around, because he could not believe that now this is his new reality, and the world in which he is now completely different from the one that was before. And yes, it's true. It was a very small, beautiful town, with a cozy atmosphere, which was really a pleasure to be in. He looked at the very water in which the leaves floated and noticed the fact that for the last three years, he only did yours, that he read books sitting at home. He looked at the beautiful windmills and fired and also said that he could not even think about going outside and was like a beast that was locked in a cage. And all these thoughts began to press a little on his small young head, which really made him think about the current state. At that moment, his mother smiled and looked in his direction. It was clear that he was thinking about something very much. So she asked if everything was all right with him, but the guy did not know how to react correctly and what to answer. 
so his mother suggested that he just look and run around this territory. They immediately began to do this, because there was no reason to worry or think about the difficult philosophical life. The guy was very happy, because after a past life as a surgeon, he finally had free time, as well as the opportunity to be a little happy, also to be a child. That is why he tried to live each of these moments in a special way. And also, I absolutely did not distract them with what difficult adult tasks. At that moment, he really felt like a real child, which he actually was, but this time, it was really possible to worry about absolutely nothing. He was very happy and really couldn't believe that. Now, this was his new reality. The sky was simply beautiful, as if it had been created at all for this moment and this work. In addition, the guy came with his mother to the top of the rock, from which there was a really beautiful view of the lake and the fir trees that grew near it. Indeed, this surprised the guys very much, because for the long years that he spent in the operating room, he never had time to see such beautiful edges and views and muse and moments. So for him, it was just surprise and pleasure. Before he was reborn, he didn't even have time to stop. He kept running and running all the time. He lived for the sake of others, and therefore he was sick of himself, because he simply had to survive. All of this paralleled the fact that he was the chief surgeon who saved every life except his own. He continued to look at this beautiful view and was finally happy, because he had never felt so free before, and expressed great gratitude for the fact that he was lucky to be reborn in this world. He smiled and immediately decided to share this moment with his mother, so he turned to her. He turned and looked at her with his sweet, childlike smile. After that, together they began to look at the sky, and the guy himself began to thank her for having opened this world to him. But the thoughts of the old work still could not leave him, because he constantly remembered how he worried about each patient and sent him to the operating room. It was in life where he was constantly busy with patients and performed various examinations and operations. He recalled how an assistant approached him and reported that the next operation would be in five minutes, at that moment when he was just sitting in his office and leaning against the wall, begging at least someone to save him from overwork. And he remembers it as a terrible dream, since it could not continue like this anymore. It was really his limit. At that moment, black and white dots and flashes began to appear in front of him. These were very scary memories that made him panic and worry very much about this situation. He screamed in panic that it was cardiac fibrillation at that moment when his mother tried to hug the guy and calm him down. She smiled and asked if he was just having a nightmare, but it was just a dream. He really did have a very good time with his mom, but why did he have such a terrible dream? He opened his eyes and looked away and wept a little. Meanwhile, the weather was still really great outside, and the city continued to live its own life, although there weren't too many people there now. He remembered that he was reborn in this world. Therefore, those very dreams visited him. So the old life decided to remind himself. But the guy looked at the next building, saying that this time he lives this life completely different from the past. And so far, Everything was very much like paradise. The people were friendly, and the trees and bushes continued to grow, delighting everyone around every day. It was time to return home, so my mother happily informed my father about this, saying that they had already arrived. At that moment, he cleaned the room a little, also very happy about such a walk, and said that he had something. He jerked his mother's dress sharply, trying to get her attention, he looked at her with his cute and childish eyes, asking her to do a small favor for him, namely to teach him magic. From such a proposal, his mother was very surprised and frightened because she did not expect that it would happen so quickly. So she asked her husband, how can he be so cute? And fell on him from happiness. She was very pleased with such an offer. So she asked the child if he was already impatient to learn magic 
but since he wants so badly, she will gladly teach him. He was very happy with this answer and continued to smile as he never seems to be able to get used to such a reaction. But my mother was ready for this, so she asked why he wants to start training? But the guy answered in the affirmative that he wanted to study the element of fire. So the mother immediately activated the fire and showed it to her child. He was really very happy because he understood that his mother was really a real professional in her field, but he did not show any special emotions. She was a little frightened and surprised by such a reaction, because how could this be? She just got fire. Isn't it amazing why the guy made absolutely no reaction? So mom started waving her fingers, asking if the magic was too weak, but the guy just said that he had already used such magic so many times, so you definitely shouldn't be offended by this. To begin with, the mother invited the guy to sit down. We are looking for, of course, he immediately agreed. She looked at him and decided to let him know that magic is really not that simple. It is the magic that they are using now that must first be transformed into Mandu. And when you use a spell, for example, fire, then the magic quickly comes into action and everything works out. The guy looked at her with surprised eyes and was very happy, because at last they began to teach him magic. But he still had another question that haunted him. He asked his mother if there is any other way to transform Manu. This made her think a little, and so she asked the guy to explain a little what he means. She wanted to know if, for example, it was possible to transform fire or something like it. Mom explained to him that first he must spend mana, and then you restore it. All this happens due to the force of friction, as a result of which the same fire is formed. The guy waved his hands and said that there's a much easier way to convert mana just once, instead of three, right? But in this case, the mana reserves will quickly run out. The girl was very surprised by such a question and also did not understand why he began to ask such difficult questions. She quickly thought and said that everything is already possible. There is some sense in this. She smiled and said that if all these three actions can be stabilized into one, then it is quite possible to realize everything. Anyway, at least in theory. At that moment, in their large three-story house, everything was also going on for a long and amazing atmosphere, during which the guy received new knowledge. He put his finger to his lips and began to think about what stabilization really means. It turns out that, in its final form, it will be possible to improve the properties? He looked at his hand, which, after another magic, began to extract his fire. And this surprised him very much, and also made his mother think several times more. Because the flame that formed from his hand was very frightened and surprised her. Especially since all this happened in their house. But the guy did not think about what happened in the house. He was pleased with the thought that, at last, everything worked out for him. At that moment, the flame woke up the father, who immediately approached them, and decided to clarify what was happening here. Why did the fire appear in the house? Mom also panicked a little and didn't even know what to say. She looked at the guy and said that he was able to use magic himself. She didn't even understand how it happened at all. When using magic, a mana flow inevitably occurs, which made her think very hard. To be honest, she still feels really bad about the process. But shouldn't he feel the same way too? But this experiment did set their room a little on fire. The guy sat and continued to analyze this situation, because it is easier for him to figure it out if you imagine that this is an atom. And to interact with mana, you will not need to keep it inside. To him, and he continued to sit and think about this topic. But the fact that he was still a child did not leave her alone. She looked at him, and I was very excited and scared. But the guy smiled and only said that he seemed to have gone too far. He looked at his mother and tried to somehow smooth this situation with his pretty little eyes, asking what happened to her now. But she also did not know what to say, because just a child can already use magic himself for which she is very proud of him. 
The guy also smiled and was embarrassed, and asked if she really thinks so. He seems to be a genius. But the mother also continued to praise him and be happy for him, because their son is really very cool. Meanwhile, at night of the same day, some strange things began to happen. This has already become a problem for a guy who woke up in the middle of the night from some strange sounds. It was his father and mother who began to sit at the table and discuss what they would do if suddenly the guy was called to the academy at such a young age. So they decided to do everything in my power to prevent this from happening. The guy woke up so abruptly and could not understand really now everything that was happening. Was it they who were discussing it? But after all, my mother also understood that it was not so easy to do this. She claimed that her son is really a genius who was born once in 100. No, in thousand years. If, after all, he will attract the attention of the academy, then what will they still need to do? They still tried to find an answer to this question. Ray also had no idea what academy they were talking about, but also understood that it seemed like he might be forcibly taken there because of his abilities. That's why he ate his hand into a fist and said to prevent it. He needs to become even stronger before he tried to learn magic for fun. But from that moment, everything has changed. Now he is determined to study it further because the absolute power over magic is quite comprehensible to him. In the meantime, the weather was really very beautiful outside. Birds were sitting in the trees. Some silhouettes were visible in the window. It seems that there really was someone there. There was some kind of menu, as well as a book and a candle, which had already been burning since the morning. Ray woke up and stretched, as he practically didn't sleep last night as he studied magic. He looked out the window and was very surprised that it was already morning outside, and another sleepless and interesting night had flown by. He did not leave his room all the time, so he did not even notice how time flies. It is really very strange, because he spent all his time studying magic. Then, should he still go outside and start to explore this world, because he is already 15 years old, 10 of which he is constantly learning and improving his skills in magic? Mana research experiments gradually increased Ray's skill levels and his ingenious understanding of how mana actually works went to a completely different level. He could sit quietly in his room and meditate, creating holograms of magic around him. This became the basis of his rapid development, which is why he himself began to study books from an early age so as not to waste his time. Due to the fact that he absorbed a large amount of mana, his hair became really pure white. He did not know if his knowledge of medicine would be useful, but he was sure that this component should be taken in the same way for study. He understood that in any case, it was worth trying it, and he wrote on the tablet that he was ready to heal sick people. He was really very shocked because his new reality still began to connect him a little with his previous life, where he also remembered that before the exit, which he had the last time, there was a lot of fire and absolutely everything changed beyond recognition. At that moment, there was both wind and ice, as well as a lot of really amazing magical things. Due to the fact that the guy constantly studied magic, he was able to synchronize all the elements from his finger, and also began to control them very confidently. And all this at the age of 15, while all his peers still continued to play games on the street. He smiled and clutched his head, because he realized that this is the ideal future that he built for himself, because very soon he will be able to become one of the most powerful and successful magicians in history, just like he did before in surgery. The weather was really very beautiful outside. The sun had just come out and began to illuminate all the roads that were here. Suddenly, he began to move the wooden stick very hard, emitting not very pleasant squeaks. But there was nowhere to go, since it was part of his plan. He stood right in the center of the city, with a sign in which he promised to heal all sick people. He began to cough, because he realized that it was really a little embarrassing. But there was nothing wrong with that, 
since he was completely confident in his abilities. He remembers that in his previous life, he was a brilliant surgeon. So now he decided to also use his favorite skills to help people, just like in his past life. He began to shout that he could cure absolutely any person, so he asked to bring him as many patients as possible. His parents rejoiced because at last their child began to do what he loved and enjoyed it. But not everyone was happy to see the young guy, as the inhabitants of the city very quickly approached him and began to ridicule the novice magician, saying that he had better go home and play doctor there. They began to mock and say that he really is the same sick person. Ray didn't like it very much. He didn't think that people would treat him like that. Because what do they even know about him? Of course, he did not expect this. So he grabbed his head and smiled, because he understood that in order for people to begin to appreciate him, it takes quite a bit of time. Someone to approach him, but it was already getting dark outside. He fell to his knees and threw his sign. He was very upset because no one came up to him. He had already begun to get ready, because he realized that today he would definitely not be able to do anything. That is why you need to return home but suddenly, a girl appeared in front of him, which surprised him a little. The guy looked up at her and barely held back his tears. But the girl really came with an interesting offer. Or rather, she wanted to ask, Can a guy really heal a sick person? The girl was very much surprised, but no less than Ray. She was very interested in whether he could really heal any particular patient. The guy liked this idea, because now his first patient appeared in front of him. He began to raise his hands and really rejoice, like a little child, which is what he was. But the girl just looked at him again and asked if he really could do it or not. But Ray first needs to familiarize himself with his condition before answering such questions. The girl looked at him and also burst into tears a little. It was noticeable that she was really unhappy. She got very angry and began to insult the guy. Because how can such a small child like him heal a sick person? Therefore, she began to insult him and leave. He was really very surprised by such an expression in his direction. So he simply smiled, absolutely expecting such a standard and banal reaction. He looked at the leaving girl and began to address her, which she certainly could not expect. Ray was very serious and said that maybe he looked like a 15-year-old boy. But there is not a single patient in this world whom he cannot cure. He was very self-confident, so he ordered the girl not to judge him by his young face. The girl was very surprised that the guy said such smart things. She could not understand why he was so angry, because he really is still a child. Once again, she looked at him and did not know why but she had great trust and respect for him because she felt a strong doctor in him. So she turned around and apologized, admitting that she really was wrong. Whereupon, she asked him for permission to introduce herself. She was the only daughter of Viscount Gate, a girl named Gate Von Elisa. She looked at the guy and said that she was not his little girl. He was also a little surprised by this, but he also introduced himself and said that his name was Ray. But the question did not leave him. If the girl is from a rich family, then what about her clothes? She was very surprised by such a manner of communication. Because why did he begin to talk to her so respectfully? So she asked him to speak the way he used to. The patient she was talking about was her father and urgently needed help. She began to tell that it started quite recently. His skin on his chest turned red and some strange bumps appeared. Everything was very swollen and became the size of a balloon. The guy offered his finger to his chin and began to analyze the situation. It became worse for a malignant tumor. But in any case, he must first look at and analyze the patient. And if he is right, then every minute counts now. He was very upset because if this is a malignant tumor the size of a balloon, then you really, really need to hurry up because it would not be too late. The girl and the guy began to move quickly to the appointed place. And now, after a few minutes, 
They had already arrived, so the girl suggested that they go there as soon as possible. And the guy at that moment looked at their house and was very surprised. But then he realized that the girl was from a rich family. Immediately at the entrance, first meet the butler, who is joyful and first welcome. The girl ran up to him and began to grab him by the jacket, asking how his father felt. But he had really bad news. He said that his condition had become very bad, and he died suddenly. This frightened her very much and made her cry because she could not believe it. Immediately after that, she began to run, and the butler tried to stop her. The child could not believe that this really happened because this could not be. She ran into the room screaming and started screaming, trying to talk to her father. But at that moment her mother was already there, who was sitting and also crying. After which she looked at her daughter. She also decided to move closer to her father, whose tumor was already very large indeed, but she still hoped that he would be fine. Ray decided not to stand aside and approached the girl, asked her permission to examine her father. He began to analyze the current situation and saw there really three very large tumors that had been in the patient's body for a long time. Looking at them closer, he realized that they really sucked a lot of energy from his body. Putting his hand to his body, he still faintly but still felt his father's heartbeat. Therefore, he concluded that he is still alive, so there is still a possibility to save him. From this, everyone was very shocked, including the butler, his mother and daughter. And the daughter began to grab his clothes, begging to save their father. Tears really began to flow in her eyes. She is not ready to believe it. And Ray himself only analyzed what was happening and realized that this was really his chance to prove what he was capable of. He looked at them and smiled, making it clear that he could handle it and there was absolutely no reason to worry. While he continued to examine his patient, along with his daughter, misunderstanding began to reign in the room because all the people were really very shocked because they did not know who this child was. But the butler said that Ray came with the girl. No one could believe that she had so thoughtlessly let some simple person into the house. One of them started screaming because he was very surprised by the fact that this guy was going to resurrect the dead Viscount. Is he some sort of swindler? Asked to come here and now plans to steal their jewelry? But his wife continued to cry because she did not understand what is now the meaning of my words. She looked at the guy and realized that she needed to cling to every opportunity now, so she only had to believe that this boy could work a miracle. The tumors were really very big. Everything turned so black and the body began to rot. The guy activated his magic and realized that he needed to concentrate all the flow of mana on the tip of his finger and thus create a scalpel. At that moment, everyone was shocked and started screaming in fear as they had never seen anything like this before. They prevented the guy from working, constantly asking what is he trying to do right now? But he did not listen to them and simply closed his ears. But he really didn't like it very much, so he decided to explain everything by saying, I'm trying to fix everything, isn't it obvious? But still no one wanted to believe him. He was already so tired of it that he just exhaled and said, If they don to believe him, then he can just leave. If of course they don to mind. His wife started screaming at the security guard. She seemed to be very agitated and aggressive as well. She looked at him, then ordered him to try to believe this young boy. Let him do his job. After the order was given, the young guy told everyone to leave the room, and with their cry they interfere with work. The guard, of course, clenched his hand into a fist and thought to himself that this child is really very cheeky. Ray decided to act and noticed that after he pierced the tumor, only pus came out instead of blood. He looked at her again and realized that it was not just a tumor, but something special. Having studied it more closely, he realized that it was formed under the influence of poison. It seems that someone wanted to poison the king a long time ago. Therefore, he continued to stand near the king 
and tried to help him by forming a huge magic circle around himself with the help of mana. It's time for a full-fledged operation, so he got ready and began to straighten his elbows. After he prepared for the operation, he still has great skills from a past life. He immediately formed a scalpel from his finger, as well as other necessary tools, and was ready to start the process. First of all, he needs to remove those parts that have already festered so that the infection is not transmitted to healthy organs. The whole family watched this process, and they were also really a little embarrassed by the fact that this was all done by a little 15-year-old genius. He also needed to make an incision in his right side on the side of his chest. After he did this, he grimaced a little at what he saw, since the picture was not the most pleasant. And it happened as he expected, even the lungs were affected, which means that the disease has been progressing for a long time. He was very interested to know why no one had considered him before, but fortunately, now he will be able to fully engage in his treatment, which he is doing right now. The rotted part of the lungs is not that big, so it can be easily restored. Immediately after that, truly magical things began to happen on the operating table. Ray decided to create a surgical thread using mana, after which he planned to use it and sew up the body. All his skills, which he had been honing for 10 years in the library, were very useful to him right now, because he continued to work a miracle in front of the whole family. They were all as shocked as possible, but no one was screaming or resisting his actions. Everyone was just watching. Suddenly, another maid came up, who said that the boy brought by the young mistress was really very smart. Also, the butler complimented him because he also did not expect him to be so cool. But the guy was as focused and serious as possible, despite the fact that he already had charisma, which is not inherent in his age, just like skillful hand movements. He was truly a genius who was born once every 1,000 years. He continued to sew up his patient as if he were in the operating room in a past life. He only had one last stitch left to do. Everyone watched him and concluded that he was like a puppeteer who was pulling the strings. No one could say anything bad about him, because everyone was shocked that he really was such a cool specialist. Almost no one had any doubts that Ray could really work a miracle and save their patient. The maid who literally just arrived was also shocked by this, because she had never seen anything like this in her life. Therefore, together they looked at the guy again, and both agreed with this. The operation was not easy, so the guy was sweating a little, and decided to wipe his forehead, as he was almost finishing the operation. He has already done all the main points, and also sewed up all the wounds of the patient. Only the simplest task remains, just to start the hearts so that it works. He began to give him artificial heart massage, and in addition, he decided to create an automatic external defibrillator, which is intended to restore the normal functioning of the heart, all with the help of his magic. And after he himself created a defibrillator, he began to massage the heart, stimulating its work. And after just a minute of time, the patient's heart began to beat again. It began to be covered with blood. Everything was so cool done, as in a previous life. The guy received unexpected positive emotions because for the first time, he managed to save the patient in this life. He turned to the patient's family and then informed them that the operation was indeed a success. Everyone was shocked, including the guard who disliked this guy so much. But Ray was no less surprised because he did not understand why they had such a reaction. Looking at the patient again, he saw that blood was coming from his mouth, so everything became clear to him. Due to the fact that the blood in the dead body suddenly began to circulate, there was a strong bleeding, which must be corrected now. Here, the guard really could not stand it a little, and could hardly restrain his emotions. But it did not last long, after which he immediately began to poke his fingers at the guy and scream, accusing him of being a scammer, which he was sure of from the very beginning. But Ray did smile, 
and he felt a little embarrassed as he tried to explain to everyone what just happened. But the guard absolutely did not believe him and tried to convince everyone else of this, since the patient still continued to lie dead. Is he alive? The guard was very angry, so he asked the guy if he really wants to explain to him right now and prove that the patient is alive. Can't he see that blood is flowing from him? But Ray tried to calm them down, because for him it was not a problem. This is a normal moment during the operation. The most important thing is that the patient is alive. But no one wanted to listen to him, since he simply opened the body of the deceased. Does he really not have at least a drop of humanity? Ray clutched his head, as it was very strange to him that absolutely no one wanted to listen to him, despite the fact that he tried to explain everything. At that moment, the girl also entered into a dialogue and told him that he had promised her that he could definitely save her father. She looked at Ray and started screaming because she just trusted him. But the guy continued to be shocked because he really did his job well and the patient really did not die. The girl asked to look at him at the moment when the patient continued to lie down, not showing active signs of life. She continued to cry very hard because her father had just died because of this guy since the girl brought him to her house. Ray was very upset. He could not understand why she did not believe him. All he asked was just to wait a little. It's really very strange because what's wrong with them? Do they really not know what an operation is? Absolutely unexpectedly for him, all the guards began to insult the guy. One of them even put a sword to his neck. The guards started yelling that the guy had killed the Viscount. And now he still dares to argue with the young mistress? He called another guard for help and also asked if what he had done with the body of the king was not enough for him. They approached him even closer and began to threaten with weapons, which Ray clearly did not expect. He exhaled and said that saving his life was indeed not easy. And instead of gratitude, they just bared their balls and sent them towards the guy. He addressed the guard in a rude tone, asking him to repeat what they were trying to accuse Ray of. Do they really believe that he is the swindler who killed the Viscount? From this, he got very angry and became as aggressive as possible, saying that this time, they definitely contacted the wrong one. Indeed, not everyone is ready to endure the loss of a loved one, and everyone has their own different emotions. As a doctor, the guy understood this, and it was clear to him that they were seriously angry. He looked at the guards and put his hands in his pockets, waiting for the fight to begin. But he also gave himself an account that nothing else could be expected from this world, in which he had just begun to appear as a person. He exhaled and tried to explain to them once again, in a calm tone, that the operation was indeed successful and that a little time was needed. He was about to leave and said that they looked at the patient after a short period of time, since he needed to recover from the operation. And now, in order not to waste time, he would just go. He looked at them and got angry, making it clear that they should not stop him in any way. But the guard was very angry. It was clear that he did not like the guy from the very beginning, so there was a feeling that he was ready to break him right now. And so it happened. He could not control himself and pulled out a sword, saying that he would destroy the guy for disrespect. Ray was as cold-blooded as, as possible since this is not the first conflict situation in his life, who is trying to stab him with his magic chains. He did not expect that this could happen to him, because how could such a small guy be able to shackle him with magic? How is this possible? He was like a defenseless child, watched by his entire army and waiting for instructions. No wonder he immediately ordered an attack on this guy. Although he was scared, he understood that Ray would not be able to use several spells in a row, so he needed to hurry. But Ray was really smart, so with a slight movement of his hand, he used his next grip. A few seconds later, two knights were immediately chained and disarmed. The most important commander was really frightened and already began to worry a little, because really the guy in his youth had mastered double magic? 
The commander looked at him and could not understand how he got such knowledge of magic. But the guy really understood very much in him and is strong. It was clear that he was not ready to give himself offense, especially when he did everything as correctly as possible. He looked again at all three guards who were trying to catch him, and like a true gentleman, he said that he was warning them for the last time. He ordered the guards not to even try to catch him. It was already really dark outside. The guy spent a lot of his time with them, which he could have spent on learning from the same magic. He was upset that his time was wasted, and no one appreciated his abilities. He realized that no matter how far they were from modern medicine, but such behavior is already quite savagery. It was unpleasant for him that everyone held him for a stupid child. Besides, they also called him a fraudster. But he did not doubt himself a bit and went to the door of his house, rejoicing that this was really the first patient who had been cured in this world. As he thought, his medical background is of little help in this world. His mother was waiting for the guy and therefore decided to ask why he came home so late. But he told her that he was really very busy, so he didn't even keep track of the time. She began to scold him, because does he really not remember what time she ordered him to be at home? He was supposed to come back at 7 p.m. Did he not look at the time? There are really a lot of bad people in this world. Why didn't he think about his mother? And what would she have to do if something happened to the guy? Therefore, she punished him, and now he will sit at home for two days. She continued to scold him and used her index finger, while Ray himself just tilted his head and listened. It was very unpleasant for him, because why everyone everywhere keeps him for a small child, that is why this thought did not allow him to sleep peacefully, and he spent the whole night in insomnia. Meanwhile, in the mansion of the king to whom the guy just performed the operation, really interesting things began to happen. The king woke up and asked everyone what had just happened. In addition, he did not leave the thought of who is this guy after all. Everyone was shocked, including his daughter, who started shouting in the direction of her father from happiness, rejoicing that he could speak again. He burst into tears of happiness because life returned to him again, which means that it is not yet time for him to die. The daughter and her wife were very surprised and frightened at the same time because they had never seen such a miracle before. Who insulted the guy and wanted to destroy him was also shocked in the same way because he couldn't to believe that his employer was alive. But how could this happen? He hid his weapons and could not believe that the Viscount had really been resurrected. Immediately after that, they began to remember the words that they spoke in the direction of the guy. They took him for a scam. In addition, the guard also felt ashamed that he insulted him and wanted to kill him. The wife also closed her eyes and began to cry because a young guy in whom no one believed could work a miracle. They looked at their room and realized that it was a huge mistake. After all, they did not even thank their savior in any way. That is why the wife ordered the security guard to take responsibility and find the guy as soon as possible. Padamushta, this issue is a matter of honor for their family. The guard was very shocked. Did he really have to take responsibility for this? He took a step and said that it was indeed very stupid magic. But his wife insisted that he find him as soon as possible and apologize for his rudeness, with which he, of course, agreed and began to carry out this order. The butler was also shocked and still could not believe that such a young boy did such a miracle. Is he really a saint? Suddenly they all turned sharply in the same direction and were frightened by this phrase. They looked at the window and continued to discuss the guy, because they had never heard that saints could use magic, so it was incomprehensible to them. The butler looked at his king, and then asked everyone to also notice how prettier his face was. Have you all seen it? He's definitely gone to hell. The guard was terrified and asked everyone in the room, because if he is not a saint, how did he bring the king back from the other world? A huge emblem has appeared, so who are the saints? 
They are chosen by the gods themselves and endowed with incredible divine power. This is an opportunity to hear the will of the Lord. It is they who are destined for the fate of God's favorites. And they are also God, only in human form. The wife grabbed her chin and got very nervous. Because was that boy really one of them? She had never heard that there were saints in their kingdom. Perhaps the rumors about his greatness have not yet spread strongly enough, since even the high priest could not cure the illness of their relative. If he is a saint, then the commander of the knights made a really big mistake. He already understood this himself, so he asked for forgiveness, because with his ignorance, he disgraced the honor of the whole family. The wife was upset, but nevertheless said that it was the fault of all those who are in this room. Therefore, the girl offered to go in search of a guy and ask for forgiveness. At that moment, the father also woke up, who began to ask what they were talking about there. This scared his daughter a little, and he held on to his chest, where they had just been early after the operation, and also asked what is the other saint that they are discussing. What were they trying to do behind his back? But his daughter approached him, after which she reported that the saint was able to heal him. The father hit his papa with his fist on the blanket and decided to ask, did he really wake up thanks to the saint? After that, he looked at the guards and started yelling at them, as they also managed to get rude to him. He was ready to tear them apart, because how dare they do that? He looked at his hands and felt young again so he ordered them to find him immediately. It is necessary to connect absolutely everyone who is in the mansion, in order to find it by any possible means. He once again looked at the room, after which he began to shout, ordering him to immediately begin this task. Well, Ray continued to sit in his room and read literature about magic. But he noticed that his ears were really burning very strongly. Did someone start discussing him so much? He spent the next morning in the forest, because he had come to this path since the very morning. His mother wished the boy luck and supported him in learning a new skill. He was very excited because he was standing with his wand and trying to use his spell, trying to activate the healing ability. But apparently something did not go according to plan, because the wand broke into pieces and the hand was also partially damaged by such an action. Ray wasn't used to the fact that he didn't get something right the first time. He was already used to it because he considered himself a young genius. He made one more attempt, and then a fire formed from his finger. Not at all what he really wanted. His mom found it funny to watch, so she took her movie glasses and popcorn, because the boy always managed to get fire, no matter what else he tried to do. But Ray was determined, so after another attempt, everything worked out for him and healing magic was formed. Unfortunately, it didn't last long, and after a few seconds, it completely disappeared, leaving the boy confused. He was very aggressive and upset, because he didn't understand why he couldn't do anything. He is a genius who has learned so much already, but only healing is not given to him at all. His mom kept laughing and told him to try again and listen carefully this time, while she explained. Healing is a magic that increases vitality through mana. It is very useful. He was surprised that he managed to activate the healing ability this time. And not only healing, but also other types of magic that are converted into abilities. Mom tried to encourage her son and asked him to try again. Then she turned sharply and heard a strange sound near them. It was a deer that ran out of the thick of the forest and was looking for shelter. He needed help because his leg was injured. Mom suggested that Ray try to heal the deer leg. This will be good practice for him, he thought, and it was really more interesting than studying on a daw. They agreed to approach him quietly so as not to scare him. Mom started to laugh, but Ray did not understand what was funny about this situation. They adjusted and began to carefully reduce the distance to the deer, but the boy did not look under his feet and accidentally stepped on a branch that broke. And this attracted the deer's attention. He became alert and realized that someone was sneaking up on him. 
They didn't have time to get a few meters before he jumped into the forest and ran. Mom nudged Ray and told him to catch up. He didn't really want to do it, but he listened to his mother and ran after him into the forest. Does a person who has been called the hands of God have to learn healing the hard way? Of course, because as a doctor, he should have saved even more lives. If you compare what he did in his past life, people in the modern world did not understand the approach of modern medicine at all and did not trust it. Before every trip to the doctor, they felt anxiety and fear. Ray used magic shackles to stop this deer. It worked. The guy was shocked how quickly he ran even with a damaged leg. He approached the deer and started talking to it and promised to help with its wound. If magic is used here, then he is ready to do anything to get hold of it. The mother watched every step of her son and controlled the process. But she was very surprised when she saw such great strength in him. Before, he did not succeed in anything, and he could not even show his abilities on a branch. He thought it was because he was still a doctor. Something went wrong and he needed to start over. After his magical powers, the deer was lying down and looked as if it was dead. The only thing that distinguished him from the dead was his breathing. Ray looked at him and could not understand what he was doing wrong. But after some time, they both realized that everything did not go according to plan. And he killed that deer. Ray thought he should be healed after his spells. Now he was a doctor, who couldn't even cure a patient. The boy began to remember how he was taught this matter. It was the only thing he couldn't do compared to other wizards, was heal it. It was all because his monopath was special among others. The main thing is not to use healing on people. He imagined that a patient came to him and asked to heal him. The guy applied his skills and the patient began to see the light at the end of the tunnel. As a result, the whole family will cry over the monument of a loved one. Ray understood that he should not use healing magic just yet. He couldn't afford to hurt anyone else. Mother and son walked through the forest and headed towards the house. It was already dark outside and all that remained was to enjoy the rest. Mom prepared a very tasty meat snack, especially for dinner. When the eldest son asked what this delicious dinner was for, she was embarrassed. He added that it must be in honor of the fact that the son could not cope with the healing. And together they began to laugh and joke with Ray. It angered him. He vowed never to study healing magic again in his life. Meanwhile, a planned government began in the Holy Kingdom there was a very beautiful sculpture that seemed to start talking. The Holy Father felt this and fell on his knees before her. It seemed to him that she completely called him to her. She gave the task for the Holy Father to find this person. The Mother of God told him to go and find a new white-haired boy for her. While the guard went to search for a new saint, the knights discussed this news. As far as they knew, he was young enough but he didn't matter if he was chosen by God. They believed that there was nothing wrong with the fact that they would have another saint. This is the first time in history. All this happened ten hours before sending the delegation of the Holy Kingdom to search. Meanwhile, the owner called an assistant to her. He fell on his knees before her and thanked her for her mercy. He then asked what important business she had prepared for him. The mistress told them to find a white-haired boy in the kingdom of Cilia. Then there was silence between them, which continued for several minutes. He said that there could be thousands of white-haired boys in the kingdom. But the mistress said that the new saint is only fifteen years old, and he must find him and bring him to the kingdom. He accepted the task without any hesitation and promised to do it right away. He ran out of the room and immediately started calling for Aaron. The boy approached the man and asked why he was calling him. He ordered to gather a delegation. They need to go to Cilia Kingdom as soon as possible. The man thought about what kind of new saint he is, who is fifteen years old. Chosen by God. Ray's father suggested that he try to learn the art of swordsmanship. This is a good skill that he can use to protect himself. Ray was interested in this, and he really saw the meaning in this training. Compared to his past life, 
where his basic needs could be guaranteed. But here, sometimes you have to take risks, even for the sake of one apple. He said he wanted to try it once. Dad was happy and offered to start training right away. They clashed swords on the training ground. Father praised Ray. For the first time, he showed himself quite well. The fact that he used to be fond of fencing helped him a lot. It was even very easy for him, but he still didn't have the strength to beat Dad. Therefore, he began to think about what he should use in order to win. What trick can be used? Ray stopped and seemed to refuse to continue the fight. Father did not understand what he was trying to do and why he stopped. He asked if Ray was ready to give up after a grueling confrontation. He did not like this word, and he again stood in front of the enemy. The guy replied that he needed some time to change his strategy. Father was a little surprised that he chose to use the sword aura. And they crossed swords again in this duel. Ray attacked with great confidence. Even his father was shocked by such a technique. He even began to think about the fact that if he continued to attack like this, he would lose. He had no choice, and he must also start using the aura so as not to lose. If he does not do this, then his chances of winning are almost zero. Ray looked up to his dad with delight and was proud of him. His strength was unmatched, and his aura was not like the standard one. He tightened his weapon and was ready to attack. When he hit Ray's sword, it just flew ten meters away from him, and the guy fell down as well. He was so engrossed in his father that he missed the attack. The father ran up to Ray and said he didn't mean to hit that hard and apologized. Recently, there have been a lot of scouts on the market. No one understood who they wanted to find and why. They were scouts from the royal castle. They were sent by order of the mistress. They were disguised as completely different workers at every step. They communicated with each other, and everyone adhered to the same opinion that it is impossible to find a person knowing only his age and hair color. This made them very angry. They were required to report every day, and again the managers came to learn about the results of the intelligence. But they simply had nothing to answer, because it was almost impossible especially if he was always somewhere at home. It was easier to find a needle in a haystack. White hair and 15 years old, this information is very little. He considered them completely ineffective, and he only wasted time with them. Vicant started yelling at them because they didn't have a clue after several days. In turn, Vicant listened to morals from his boss. He said that he was an unusual boy, and if people find out about his act, then a war would begin, and the Holy Kingdom would declare war on them. If he didn't want to tarnish the name of their family, then he had to find him now. Vikant was ready to pay any money to whoever would find him. A man was standing nearby who heard the whole conversation, and he asked how much they would pay for it. If the payment suits him, then they will be able to fully count on him. He was not even a man, but a boy. He always had a smile on his face. After training with his father, Ray had a broken and cut arm. He apologized to his son and said that it was not on purpose. The boy laughed and said that there was nothing wrong. His mother ran up and asked what happened to his hand. She saw that there was a broken bone. Ray reassured his mother, because they could heal her with magic. Mom said that she would fix everything, but the boy insisted that he would heal his hand himself. He began to heal his hand without any strain. A large amount of magic immediately concentrated around him, although there was no such thing before. Mom was shocked by what she saw with her own eyes. It was something new for her. And after a few minutes, the wound completely disappeared, and the hand looked as it did before the injury. But his mother did not understand how he managed it. Because they trained for a long time, and he did not even manage to heal a branch but here he healed his hand without any problems. The father was also shocked. The mother reminded that his last attempt ended in the death of the deer. Ray realized that he definitely needed to explain the situation. He turned to his parents and said that he wanted to tell them something about himself. 
Ray began by saying that he was different from ordinary people. He was different, one of thousands of ordinary people. Mom said she never doubted that, and he would always be the best. But Dad whispered something in her ear. Mom said they would always be by his side no matter what. Even if he brought home an orc daughter-in-law, they would still support him. This was too much even for those who were not superstitious. In the evening, the parents asked Ray again about his mana flow, because they had thought of something else at first. He replied that he uses his mana a little differently. He can endlessly use the streams of mana that he himself produces. These streams of mana were much stronger. Now the mother understood why his magic was so powerful. That's why when he uses healing on others, they just can't handle the streams of pure mana. They all remembered that the meat was very tasty that evening. The parents understood that their son was a genius, but asked him not to use these abilities on other people. This could be very dangerous. They were right because he can't even heal ordinary people with magic. But as a doctor, he can't back down. He has to find a way out of this situation. Mom and Dad also began to think about this question, but nothing came to mind. The boy knew for sure that he needed more practice in surgical operations. After their conversation, Ray said he needed to leave for a while. According to him, he went for a walk because the guy could not say that he was going to look for new patients. Before leaving, his mother asked him not to go anywhere with strangers. He promised that he would not do this and would return soon. Two tourists reached the village, but they did not think that it would be so big. They were going to pass this place quickly, but now they can even rest there. A guy approached them from behind and asked them to ask one question. He wondered if they had met a similar boy anywhere, with white hair and blue eyes. Such a handsome guy. But it was a very bad picture for them to compare anyone to. The guy started shouting and demanded answers to his questions. The man asked not to shout, because they really had not seen anyone like him. Ray was just passing by and stopped to see what was going on between them. In their place, the population increased significantly and various people came. The boy heard the name of the knight, which was familiar to him. He said he was paid a lot of money to find this guy. If he knew where he was, he would not have asked passers-by about it. It seems that he was a respectable young man. Then the knight looked to the side and saw this boy in front of him. The boy thought that maybe these people were looking for him. He ran up to the boy and began to examine him and compare his drawing. Then he moved even closer to Ray. He had white hair and blue eyes. The knight asked to write to the guild that he had found him. The knight tried not to frighten him and said that he was from the information guild. But Ray didn't care. He agreed to go. The man even liked it, that he was so young but so sensible. He asked if he had been taught not to communicate with strangers. But the boy did not understand why he was being asked this. Ray said he knew they were looking for him on Vicomte's orders. He just wanted to see his patient. When they were already riding the chariot, the knight asked to ask the boy a question. What did he mean when he called Vicomte a patient? Is someone sick in his place? Without thinking, he answered that it was true, without even looking him in the eye. Ray asked if he was all right now after his treatment. The knight began to think of him as delusional. He was very similar to him. While they were talking, they were taken to the right place. The boy went outside with a smile on his face. As soon as he took a step from the chariot, all the servants began to greet him. They called him a saint and welcomed him into his kingdom. At first he was scared, but then he even started to like it. Although Ray was happy to be here, he had something to say to the king. He was not the saint they were looking for. They found the wrong one. But the king did not allow such a thing to be said in his presence. He knew that the boy was a saint and was sure that he had saved him and his family. The king considered Ray to be the one who raised him from the dead. Therefore, he cannot be a saint. The guy said it was a normal standard treatment that any doctor could do. Then the queen joined in, 
and she was also sure that Ray had saved their family and wouldn't let him deny it. The woman made her daughter Alice express her gratitude to Ray. She was a little scared, but thanked him for saving her father. She was wearing a very beautiful dress and elegant gloves. The boy paid attention to her, but could not remember her from last time. Especially the last time, when he treated her father, she said that he was brought for nothing and that he would not be able to help. Parents were shocked by such behavior of their daughter. Dad turned to her and asked if he taught and raised her in such manners. He ordered to quickly repent and apologize. Ray was very flattered and liked it. He tried to say that he was not offended and just decided to joke. The boy didn't understand why they behaved like that, because he didn't really do anything special. Then he turned away from the royal family and returned to the maid. He asked where the guy who came with him had gone. She answered that he left almost immediately. This guy was running in an unknown direction very fast. He couldn't believe that the boy was really a saint. He was very happy that he managed to learn such valuable information. He needed to get to the guild as soon as possible to inform the guild. Ray hoped nothing bad would happen to him on the way. The boy was treated to delicious food and asked every time if he liked everything. The king said that they were trying very hard, and he was very happy that he liked it. The boy admitted that he doubted that he would ever be able to taste such food again. He could not worry about it, because after he arrived in the Holy Kingdom, he would eat this every day. Ray froze on the spot and couldn't even swallow his tea. He asked the commander what he was talking about. The man thought that he had already been informed. The delegation of the Sacred Kingdom has already arrived and is ready to take him home. The guy was angry and asked how they even found out that he was here. There were rumors that the father received frankness from the mistress herself. Ray didn't understand what they needed him for or what that meant. A holy kingdom that was blessed by the gods. Every time the saints appeared, the mistress sent frankness. She didn't speak directly to people, but she comes under signs and hangs. They say that a nimbus always shines over the saints. It blinds the eyes. The boy asked what he should do now. The commander replied that he needed to go to the Holy Kingdom. They sincerely congratulated him on such a significant event and wished him only luck. Meanwhile, his parents did not even suspect that he was not at home. Mother thought that he was very tired from the walk, so he did not leave his room. Father said that he should not be disturbed for now. Before going to sleep, Ray thought about everything he had been told about the Sacred Kingdom. He was so worried about all this that he fell asleep very quickly. He just wanted to live a peaceful life in this amazing world. The morning came and Cilia Castle greeted passers-by with its glow and beauty. The maids talked among themselves about who had arrived and was living in their annex. It was a holiday from the Sacred Kingdom of Gay. Finally, the holiday came to their kingdom. One of the maids asked what she looked like, and she heard that this girl received a blessing even in childhood. She had beautiful hair that reached her waist. Her eyes were like pink diamonds. It was said that she was so beautiful as if she were always illuminated by the sun's rays. If they are lucky, they will be able to see her while she is in their kingdom. Saint was looking out the window, and at that moment, a servant knocked on her door and asked if he could come in. The girl replied that he could enter without any problems. He opened the door a little and said that she had to go to a dinner party. She was upset that she was not allowed to rest for a second. The servant allowed himself to say that the saint should hurry in order to be in time. While she was leisurely preparing for dinner, she remembered one thing. She asked the servant if he knew anything about the saint. He just had very good news on this matter. The girl could not believe that her life would finally become a little easier. A smile immediately appeared on her face. She had been waiting for this moment for a very long time. Finally, he will arrive and there will be a person who will understand her. Ray still managed to escape from the commander and return home. But he understood that now they know where he lives and it will be very easy to find him. He couldn't come up with anything. If people from the Holy Kingdom caught him, 
he would be finished, and his second life will be much more complicated than the previous one. The boy will have to pray to a god he does not know. He shouted aloud that he did not want this, and at that moment his parents entered his room. Ray thought about telling his parents so they could run away together, but the fact is that they have nowhere to run. They have a job and a house here. Wherever he hides, the sacred kingdom will continue to search for him. The mother noticed that the son was very nervous since the previous evening. The boy did not answer her and did not say a word. He burst out of his bed and said he needed to leave for a while. His parents could only guess what might have happened to him. Meanwhile, in the kingdom of Salia, the Vicomte was speaking with his commissioned knight. He told him that the Holy Kingdom itself was interested in this boy. That is, his guesses were confirmed about that. That he was a holy boy. He could be identified by his blue eyes and white hair. The knight said that he could rely on him, because he came to him as soon as he received this information. Vicomte understood and already submitted the information to the Sacred Kingdom. All that remained was to find this guy. He decided to send people to look for him on the outskirts of the city. Most likely, he lives there, because it is clear from his appearance that he is not from a wealthy family. Everyone will be looking for a guy in the village, and thanks to this, they will buy time. Then it will be as they agreed. When the kingdom pays the money, he will return. The knight looked towards the forest and thought. He had a question. Vicant saw that the knight was distracted and decided to ask what was wrong with him. The boy pointed to the forest and asked if they had already searched it. The commander immediately changed his face and asked if he didn't know who lived there and why they didn't go there. But the knight decided not to rush to conclusions and assumed that the saint could live there. But the commander was sure that if he lived in that forest, he simply would not be able to survive there. Those who are there do not like outsiders at all and are never happy for them. They knew only themselves and their values, but for some reason the knight had a strange premonition that he might be there. And his house can be located exactly in the place that everyone avoids. The forest gave its guests peace and tranquility. Its light rustle of leaves could enchant anyone. Ray decided to take a walk in it. He was thinking of getting some air and figuring out what to do next. But unfortunately, he had no idea how to prevent it. Is there nothing left for him but to run away from his family and his fate? But the boy also did not want to spend his whole life as a fugitive. He sat down on a large stone and wanted to put his thoughts in order. And while he was thinking about the future, someone could be heard walking through the forest from afar. He quickly stood up and began to sort through options for further movement. With every minute, the sounds were getting louder and closer. He couldn't believe that people from the sacred realm had already found him. After a while, these sounds disappeared. Ray decided to wait to see what would happen next. But it seems that these sounds from the depths of the forest just dawned on him. While he was looking in one direction, the trees and bushes began to rustle in the other direction. He did not understand what was happening there, and began to carefully inspect the area. Then he heard the tree begin to speak to him. The boy clearly heard this voice, but did not understand where it came from. This voice asked him what he was doing in this forest. He thought maybe it was a forest spirit, but he replied that he just stopped to rest a little. But he was told that this was their territory, and he had better get out of here. He did not pay attention to their remarks and said that he wanted to sit a little longer. The voice repeatedly told him to go away. Ray became wary of whoever was talking to him. He was indignant that some persecuted him. Others chased him away. But he wanted the voice to understand that he was leaving because of his own desire and not because of what he ordered him to do. Before leaving, he asked him to come to him and show his face. There was no reaction from the voice, and no one was going to come to him. Since there was no direct threat to him, he decided to sit still and rest. A voice appeared again, ordering to go away right now. But the boy absolutely did not respond to these requests and continued to enjoy the surrounding nature. 
A silhouette appeared behind the tree and said that he was at a loss for words. What an ill-mannered human creature had come into their territory. But Ray replied that he didn't even come out to greet him because one of them was still ill-mannered. The boy was carelessly lying on the stone he had chosen for himself from the very beginning. And some creature suddenly jumped out in the boy's direction. He noticed this and was very scared, but he needed to protect himself somehow. Ray used his powerful mana streams and fought off the attack. He quickly jumped down from his resting place, and he began to complain that he was attacked unexpectedly, and no one does that. If he hadn't left his mana active, he wouldn't have been able to defend against this blow at all. He then looked at the person attacking him and was surprised. This person was wearing strange clothes that he had never seen among ordinary people. The ears were very long and pointed. And as a result, it turned out to be a girl, thanks to her appearance. The guy assumed that she was an elf. He was at a loss as to what an elf was doing in this area. The girl noticed that he had completely blocked her abilities. She realized that this guy was not an ordinary person like the others. He was ashamed and said that it was really true. In this case, she categorically forbade him to be on their territory. The girl began to prepare her next attack. But the boy hoped that after the first she would calm down and understand that there was no point in this. When they collided in a duel, there was a huge explosion. The girl flew several tens of meters away from Ray. But when she looked at him, she saw that he was in perfect order. He just soiled his shirt a little. She could not believe that he belonged to a superior race. He stood and did not understand what the girl was talking about, and what a higher race was. Then she said that she had changed her mind and would let him stay with them in the forest. Then she asked him to follow her. But now he himself did not want to stay and said that he had to go. The girl said that they respect the strong. These are the rules of the forest elves. She invited him to their village. Ray did not know that in this forest there is a village where elves live. Although at the beginning she tried to attack him, but she was not bad. Just like any normal person, she defended her home. The boy agreed. He only had one request, that she stop attacking. After the agreements, they set off together on the road to the village of elves. Ray noticed that she hadn't even introduced herself to him. The girl replied that she was called Phyla from the Gradle Flame. The boy stopped and thought about what a beautiful name she had but she did not like this flattery and began to get angry with the boy. In order to correct the situation, he began to say that her name was terrible, and he did not like it at all. The guy said if she wanted to address him, she could call him Ray. While they exchanged words, Fila said that they were already there. The boy was very surprised when he saw such a village in front of him. It was very beautiful and clean. He had no idea that they could have such a village. Did she really spend her whole life in the forest? Because he had never been here before. The other elves noticed him and realized that an ordinary person had come to their village. It was Fila who brought him here. They started asking her why she did it. Their reaction was expected and fully reasoned. It is logical that they will be concerned about the safety of their town. Another girl ran up to Phyla. She was very happy to see her at home. Then she asked who this guy was. She assumed that it could be a new assistant. Phyla replied that she thought he should be brought here. Everyone began to gather around the boy and look at him. He looked like he couldn't even defend himself. Phyla also thought so when she first met him. Then she tried to chase him away, but she couldn't do anything. He was stronger than it seemed at first glance. The girl was surprised that he managed to stop Phyla's attack. At first she thought that maybe he was from a higher race. But it seems that was not the case. The girl began to look at him, and from the outside there were no signs of super abilities. Phyla asked her friend how Lady Era was feeling. She lived in a house that was built especially for her. Since it was above ground, it was safe enough. The girl replied that nothing had changed and she continued to sleep. And she also remembered that an elder was looking for Phyla, and she needed to go to her. 
Phyla interrupted Ray's communication with the other residents and told him to follow her. He knew that elves do not treat strangers well, but it seemed to him that he was received well enough. Phyla said it was all because she brought him here, not someone else. He thought that this girl was trusted in her village. Respectable people in their village lived in trees in special houses. So they went upstairs and knocked on the door. Phila met the elder and said that she had come at her request. The woman greeted her and was very happy to see her, so she invited her to visit her. She insisted that she come in because they had not seen each other for a long time. Phila began to ask about her well-being and the news that appeared while she was not at home. She replied that everything was normal and she was interested in who came with her. Phyla said she brought the human child because she thought he might agree as an assistant. But the boy asked to wait, because he did not agree to become their assistant. As a result, they still came in to drink tea and discuss the news. Phyla assured that this would give him many advantages. He would be able to move freely around the village and even make friends with other elves. But the boy did not understand why he needed it and why he had to agree. The elder began a conversation about why she was looking for her. It was necessary to keep this conversation a secret from the other elves. Phila turned her full attention to the elder and was ready to listen carefully. The girl said that she would take this secret with her to the grave. The elder also said that this boy should also go outside. Because the conversation was really very serious and important for their village, Ray went outside and could not believe that he was being manipulated as they wanted. First come, then leave. He had time to think about his future, become a saint in the Holy Kingdom, or become an assistant to the elves. It was a very difficult choice for him. He didn't really want to choose any of these options. Meanwhile, in the kingdom where Cilia were involved all to find the saint. Svyatka asked the assistants if they were able to find out anything about him and find him. But they all answered the same that they did not have any results. The girl said that they could not find him only because of their laziness. They began to cry and swore that they had done everything for this. But if they did everything possible, then why there were no results until now? Why does she need such servants? They asked to give them a little more time and they would definitely be able to find him. The saint was upset because no one in this world could understand her like another saint. She thought and decided to give them one last chance, but she said that they might not even come to her with bad news. This time they must exceed their capacity or her patience will simply wear thin. Phila talked to the elder alone and did not understand how she could die due to mana. Her breathing problems are finally over. Either the disease is receding or she is living out her last days. Besides, she is still unconscious. Phila was stunned by such news and did not know what to say to her. After they finished talking, the girl went outside to Ray. She was completely broken and the boy saw it perfectly with his own eyes. The girl did not say a word after the conversation, and tears welled up in her eyes. She stood silently and looked at the lady's house opposite. Ray decided to ask why she was so upset. The girl said that the person who lives in that house is sick and most likely it is an incurable disease. Then she thought that he was eavesdropping. But the boy said that he didn't do it on purpose. He could just hear something even through the door. Ray thought about it, and he also lost his temper after he found out. The girl told him not to worry, because he was human and they were elves. They belonged to different races. She was right. Sometimes even people can't understand each other and this includes different races. Only he wanted to make one small clarification. There is no shame in caring for others regardless of their race. What difference does it make for whom his soul cares about, and the soul of a creature of another race is exactly the same? Fila forgot about their main problem even for a minute after this speech. They went to her house to drink tea. When they sat down at the table, the girl kept looking at the boy without taking her eyes off it. He seemed to her a very handsome and attractive guy. She watched every action of the boy and how he drank tea. 
Then she caught herself thinking that she was starting to like him as a boyfriend. Fila did not understand why this was happening to her. At that time, the boy turned to her with a request. He asked about Lady Era. She said that she was dying. Ray decided to offer to heal her with his powers. Fila was shocked by such an offer from him and lost her voice. He said that his goal is to help people, and he does not care about race, whether it is a person or an animal. After she thought a little about his words, she decided to ask if he was sure that he was capable of such a thing. He said that he is sure that any disease can be cured, and he can try to help her. But he didn't even know anything about her condition. How could he say such things? The boy saw that Fila did not believe his words at all. He began to think how he could prove to her that he could heal people. Then he raised his hand sharply and tried to use his mana streams. Phyla jumped up and quickly grabbed her sword so she could defend herself against the attack at any moment. The boy used his abilities to create a blade out of mana. After that, he swung and stuck it deep enough in his leg. He felt a sharp pain and was in no hurry to remove the weapon from his leg. The girl threw away her sword and began to scream and ask why he did it. When Fila ran closer, she saw that there was a very deep wound. After she looked, the boy began to use one of his healing skills. The whole house shone. His energy seemed to penetrate the walls. Phyla did not have time to observe everything that was happening at that moment. After he accumulated this mana, Ray channeled it into his wound. He spent a lot of energy in order to demonstrate his abilities in the best way. Even the elves who were not far from the house saw that the light was radiating from it. You'd think it was some sort of mystical treehouse. This went on for about a few minutes, and when the boy finished, he looked very exhausted. However, his wound was completely healed in those two minutes. Only his pants were damaged. Fila tried to explain this fact in her head. Ray said that if there is a person who can heal that elf, then it is only him. The boy was sure that he would definitely be able to help her. But when they voiced their proposal to the elder, she said absolutely no. Phyla tried to explain to her that this is their chance, and they cannot treat Lady Era so irresponsibly. She was someone they respected and worshipped. But even with good intentions, they cannot take such a risk. The elder cannot allow an unproven medicinal method to be used on her. No matter how the girl tried to prove to her that they could really help, the woman refused to even listen. She asked them to go about their business and do something useful. Fila was upset and even angry with the elder for not giving her the opportunity to even try. Ray thought, what's the point of her not even trying? Who will they worship if she dies? Phyla and her boyfriend went to the forest for a walk. It was obvious from the girl that she was very upset, especially since she saw Ray's abilities and believed that he could help. She really hoped they would convince the elder to agree. Ray said that everything was fine and maybe she would be able to heal without his help. She started to smile, but her smile showed desperation. Ray asked if he could visit them in the village sometimes. She replied that she could, and, if she wished, she could even stay to live with them. The more he earned the recognition of the other elves. The guy listened to the girl to the end and thanked her for her kindness and sincerity. He said that he would leave. The girl did not think that the boy would leave them so quickly. Ray was a little embarrassed and said he had some business ahead of him. He promised to come back tomorrow, so he asked Phyla not to miss him. It angered her, although she understood that it was true. When he left, the girl felt relief and sadness at the same time. She watched as he moved further and further away from their village. At the same time, the girl could not tear herself away from his silhouette. She couldn't take it anymore and decided to calm down and leave. As soon as the girl left, the boy left the path and ran into the forest. He wanted her not to see his next actions. Ray climbed into the nearest tree and began to examine the village. He tried to find among the many houses, Lady Era's house. And so he finally saw him in the distance, on the highest tree. The guy looked at him and said that doctors never abandon their patients. 
He needed to get to this tree without being noticed, and he did. When he opened the door to the house, it was like a royal court. It seemed to him from the street that it was an ordinary tree house. He began to look for the lady's room, and when he found it, he quietly entered her door. As soon as he opened the door, a glow rushed from the lady into that crack. Everything around in the room shone and glittered, because the house was located specifically opposite the sun. The boy came closer to her and saw an exceptionally beautiful elf. She was lying as if she were already dead, all in white, beautiful clothes. The body was not completely covered with a cloth. Her hands were folded on her chest. She was very beautiful with long, beautiful hair. But her eyes were closed. Ray liked her very much, because her beauty could enchant anyone. He tried not to be distracted and to collect himself, because he could not lose his common sense in front of the patient. He took her hand to check the lady's pulse. Then he bent down to her face to check if she was breathing. All this was normal, so the reason for her sleep was something else. He took her hand tightly again and held it. It looked romantic enough. Ray wanted to look inside the body with Mana. He could walk through all her nerve cells and check the whole body. But her body was also fine. Otherwise, he didn't even think she was dying. Will he not be able to cure her? It was necessary to better study the peculiarities of this world before rebirth. While he was with her, a strange smell began to appear in the room. The boy also felt it on himself and began to think about what it could mean. It seemed to come out from under the body of this lady and was not very pleasant. When the boy turned her over and saw what was happening to her, he was shocked. This horrible smell was coming from the bedsores on the back of her body. He did not understand how they could bring her to such a state. They told her how much they loved her and adored her, but they couldn't even take care of that. He needed disinfectant to treat his wounds. But where could he be taken? Because now his possibilities are limited, because no one knows that he was next to the lady. When he looked up, he saw from the window a very beautiful lake and a green meadow. He immediately went there and found a leaf in the form of a water vessel. Then he went to the lake and collected clear water there. He couldn't directly use his healing magic because it was dangerous. He still remembered the deer he tried to heal. So now he decided to channel the healing power into the water. In any case, he had no choice but to act on this plan. He returned to her room, cleaned his hands, and began to use the water to heal her wounds. At the last moment he stopped and remembered that this was a creature that everyone respected and worshipped. The words of the elder stuck in his mind that she did not allow the use of the latest methods to treat Era. He hoped that later he would not be punished for having dared to touch God's creature. Her back looked terrible. This was logical because she had been lying in one place for several weeks and no one had turned her over. In any case, how could they abandon her in such a state if they respected her so much? They had no reason to forbid saving her. Hopetz began treating her bed sores with his healing water. He carefully moved along her body and gradually healed the wounds. Ray was so engrossed in the process that he didn't notice it getting dark. He had to go, because the journey home would still take some time. Until he could figure out the cause of the illness, this was the best he could do for her. He decided that he must come tomorrow. Meanwhile, the servants in the kingdom were looking for the mistress to bring the news. They should soon receive information about the search for the saint. Their guild is searching all the kingdoms, so it was only a matter of time. The girl has already heard it so many times that it just immediately becomes unpleasant for her. She warned them that her patience was on the limit. That is, they allowed themselves to test her patience. The servants fell to their knees and again began to cry and beg for mercy. The girl was already fed up with their bullying and she had enough of that. She got up and said she couldn't trust them anymore, and she will personally search for him. Sviata asked to prepare ammunition for her departure. Meanwhile, Ray once again came to Lady Era to wash her wounds. They noticeably healed, and after a week, the boy expected that they would completely disappear. Everything went very well. 
Every day he entered her house and worried about her. First, he wiped her body with purified water and then warmed the stiff muscles to circulate the blood. The rest of the time he spent in her study. There he studied her boring books and this became his daily routine. The boy looked at her drawings and had fun in this way. Of course, she never answered his questions, but he always spoke out loud anyway told her about how he got to her or what happened with Fila, and also about other things that came to his mind. And thus a month passed. Ray came to her house the next day and opened the door. He began to tell that Phyla had a day off and they decided to have tea. But when the boy came closer, he felt this terrible smell again, but much stronger. He stood shocked at the entrance and did not understand what was happening. Ray then dropped his bag and ran over to her bed to check on her. But she was barely breathing, and if a little more time passes, she will die completely. Something prevented her from breathing, and it would be noticeable even to an ordinary person. He could not even think that this could happen. The guy started looking for a ventilator, but then he remembered that he was not in the hospital. He was very angry that he was powerless in this situation. The only thing he could do at that moment was nothing. He just literally watched her slowly die. But he could not allow that, because this is his patient and he will fight to the end. The boy looked over her whole body once more to find the reason. But there were no external damages and no traces of poisoning either. Vital organs were functioning normally. Then it was not clear why she was dying. He had to find a way to heal her. He began to think and remembered that he possessed strong mana streams. But should he have used his power, will Era be able to withstand his mana and not have the same result as with the deer? The thought of this made him laugh a lot, and he smiled. He studied medicine in order to save people, not to be afraid of them. And at such an important moment, everything flew out of his head. But he had to pull himself together and do his best. The boy began to activate his mana and concentrate it in one place. The whole room was covered by a bright glow that penetrated the walls. The house began to shimmer thanks to Ray's powers. Many elves who were nearby saw the same glow again, but already in the lady's house. Aira was filled with his magical energy and began to glow as well. Ray hoped she could withstand such powerful mana streams. The guy gave all his strength to heal her, and tried to control the mana so as not to hurt Aira. She rose to the very ceiling under the influence of magic. Her body seemed unreal, as if from a fantasy film. Phyla saw that many people gathered near the lady's house and decided to check what was happening there. When she ran up, she saw a bright light coming from the lady's house. She had only seen such a glow once, and that was when Ray was healing his wound. Is he still trying to save their Lady Era? She did not know how long he had been doing it. But even a creature of another race cared much more for her than they, those of the same race. She ran into her house, opened the door, and saw something crazy. Ray used his abilities to make some inexplicable movements. There was a huge concentration of mana around him. The girl could not even imagine that this was possible. Ray gave all his strength to this healing. It was incredibly important to him. He needed some more time to fully finish this process. And finally, he stopped, and all that remained was to hope for a positive result. She was still in the air under the boy's mana. After some time, this barrier collapsed, and Era was free. Due to this powerful wave, both Phyla and Ray simply flew away several meters. The boy was affected much more because he was the one using this power. He fell to the ground, but even though he was in a lot of pain, he kept thinking about Era. When he regained consciousness a little, he was able to open his eyes. And he saw in front of him a beautiful girl who radiated joy and beauty. He had nothing more to worry about. Everything worked out for him. Therefore, he fell powerless, finally relaxed, and closed his eyes. He did not understand where he was. The feeling was as if he was in water. It was a very pleasant feeling, and he wanted to rest like that a little more. He opened his eyes a little and saw Era, 
who was telling someone that she would take care of him herself. The elder argued with her and said that this is a human being and he is not their friend. He tried to do something with her body without permission. The boy realized that he was alive and heard Aira's voice for the first time. She told the elder that she didn't want to hear it anymore. They left her here to rot for twenty years, and this person helped Aira without hesitation. It even sounded funny. He was saved by a person who simply felt sorry for her, not those who worshipped her all her life. The boy seemed to be flying somewhere in the sky. He almost did not feel his body and completely surrendered to the current in his thoughts. Her voice calmed him. He was very sweet. He shouted very loudly and started calling Era. Then he calmed down and realized that it was most likely a dream. Ray tried to move his limbs to see if he was awake. Then Era spoke to him and asked why he called her. She sat next to him and did not take a single step away. Era said she would be there to help him recover. The guy was embarrassed and could not believe that everything worked out for him, and that he did not risk in vain to save her life. She came up and hugged the boy and thanked him for saving him. Aira also added that Ayana drew the picture he found when she was sad, so she asked him not to laugh at it too much. Ray was even more surprised because it seems that she heard all his stories and conversations. Aira replied that she heard absolutely everything he said. The boy cried and the girl asked why he was crying. She was grateful to him because he was the only one who cared for her until the very end. And if he had given up, she wouldn't be sitting in front of him now. Aira said she didn't even know her rescuer's name. The guy finally relaxed, smiled and said his name was Ray. She thought for a moment and said his name several times. And then she started to smile sharply and said that it was a wonderful name. It was already dark outside, and they were still talking. The boy stood by the window and watched everything that was happening in the village. He offered her to come out to people when she had already recovered. After all, they probably care. The girl replied that, for the past twenty years, she did not really care about them. They did not even visit her. And none of them cared about her. Besides, her anger will not be able to disappear in one day. Ray listened intently and completely agreed with her opinion. Then he decided to ask how long it had been since she regained consciousness. But for some reason, the girl pretended that this word was completely unknown to her. The guy decided to repeat and asked when she started hearing him. Era answered that she never lost consciousness. All this time she heard everyone. Ray was shocked by this and didn't know what to say. That is, she did not lose consciousness from the very beginning. She wanted to say that she was lying unable to move and just waiting for something. Ray wanted to say so many words to her, but decided to hold back. The guy took her hands and simply said that she handled the situation very well. The girl was embarrassed and slightly lowered her head. And then something really moved her and she was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. The girl said that she hated the people around her. All problems were always caused by people and always remained unpunished. The mere mention of people made her hate even stronger. Then she firmly took Ray's hand and pulled them forward. Everything was fine with her body. Besides, her life had just begun. Era said, until one person promised to heal her, she immediately got angry from her touches. But with Ray, everything was different. He did it selflessly and did not ask for anything in return. And like no one else, he cared for the girl and made a lot of effort. She remembered how he talked to her and told how Fila invited him to tea. He said that he never thought that elven tea was so tasteless. The girl answered in her subconscious as best she could and said that their tea was really not very good. Then he read a book about dye her flowers. The boy asked if these are the flowers that grow in her garden. She replied that it was them, and he was very similar to them. Devotion and a smile, that's what these flowers meant. After that, he noticed her drawing and said that drawing is definitely not her talent. She already knew she was bad at drawing, but hearing it from someone else was strange. 
because no one ever contradicted her and always praised her so that she would not do it, because everyone was afraid of punishment. The only thing she wanted when she slept was to answer Ray at least once. Era could not stand it and her emotions overcame her. She began to sob in front of the boy. She covered her face with her hands so he wouldn't see her tears. Then she pounced on him and started hugging him and thanked him once again for not giving up. Meanwhile, in the kingdom, the holiday did not find a peaceful place for itself. She asked the commander if he did not know exactly where the holy boy was. The girl came to visit him, so she apologized for such a late meeting and allowed her to go. Before leaving, she added something to her monologue. If they try to deceive her, the truth will come out sooner or later anyway. Saint looked at the map and thought about where she should go next. If they couldn't find any traces in the neighboring kingdom. The only place where they did not search was the nearby forest. She ordered the entire guild to gather and prepare to go into the forest. It was deep night outside. The full moon was walking among the stars. Ray asked Era how the villagers would treat him now. She asked him not to worry about it because he had saved her life. Moreover, they did not intend to do this, and that says it all. And if someone treats him badly, it will only make her worse. You will have to have a personal conversation with such elves. By the way, despite the fact that Era woke up, she still did not see the other elves. The fact that they did not appear to her even after she recovered meant only one thing. They were very frightened by this flow of mana coming from the house. Therefore, the problem was precisely with this guy, that they did not dare to visit their lady. Era took his hand and said as he filled her with mana. He held her hand as tenderly as if it were his loved one. At first, she was scared and did not think that someone would touch her body, and even more so that it would be a person with mana. But when she felt the flow of mana, she realized that there are still good people left in the world. That's why she asked him not to bother. It was enough for him to just be next to her. Ray was very happy to hear such kind words addressed to him, and it really calmed him down. Then the boy said that from the very beginning he was interested in how old she was. It was clear that the girl did not like this question and answered that it was a secret. He knew that elves lived much longer, so he assumed she was around 200 years old. Era pretended not to hear the question and turned away. The guy was persistent, so he asked again and said that maybe she was 500 years old. She continued to be silent. But when he said that she might even be 1,000 years old, she jumped up and said that it was already too much. She did not understand why he thought about her age at all. The boy replied that he was just joking. Era pretended to believe it and started laughing. They sat together and watched the stars in the sky. The girl had never felt anything like this. Was it happiness? The guy said that it's strange to feel happy when people make fun of you. But she was sure that she was happy now. Era could not feel happiness because she was never interested in anything. Ray interrupted her and said that now she can be happy. She agreed, but on one condition, if he will be next to her. The boy was not surprised because he understood that this situation had brought them very close. When he treated Era, the feeling of inferiority or even lack of something did not leave him. Maybe he was the best doctor in his past life, but here he is, just a helpless person hoping for luck. The most important thing in medicine is experience. He needs to gain experience in this world in various fields. If the Holiday Kingdom is the most developed in the field of medicine, moreover, if they themselves are looking for it, then there is only one thing left. Become a saint and gain all the knowledge and experience of the Holy Kingdom. He was very sorry that he would not be able to stay with Era, but he had no choice. They were sitting on the bed and Ray said that it got really loud outside. In the middle of the village, people gathered in front of the elder. Ray said maybe they should go out to the people. They protested against the elder because she was hiding the fact that their queen was terminally ill. She tried to apologize and said she made a mistake. Their denunciations became even louder. In such an atmosphere, 
it is better for them not to interfere. Aira understood that no one had come to her all this time. He saw that the girl was angry and asked her not to do this. But she did not listen and went down to the center to the people. The lady looked very presentable and beautiful. Her health was in perfect order. She stopped by the elder and greeted her. Aira looked angry and asked to stop these accusations. Everyone began to worship her and greet her. Every elf. But she said she didn't want to hear it anymore. Aira asked if there was even one elf among them who came to visit her personally. Everyone was silent and no one could answer this question. The girl knew the answer to this question, but she still felt very offended. None of them even tried to find out what happened to her, and now they are trying to blame someone for their guilt. Although they themselves did nothing good, one of the elves dared to tell the truth about the elder. Aira thought he was just going to make excuses for their actions. But he said that if the elder had told them what had happened to their lady, they would certainly have come to her. He suspected that she had personally ordered the elder not to tell about it. The elder watched this from the outside and understood what nonsense he was talking. Ray also heard and saw all this. This elf definitely made things difficult. Era was extremely angry and was ready to punish the hypocrites. She has demonstrated her power and strength, which makes her their queen. The girl decided to order them and use minimal force for this. She threw particles of her magic at them and paralyzed the elves. They felt pain as from an electric shock. Era sometimes has to be cruel, so that no one takes her kindness for weakness. She considered these elves to be ungrateful scum, and if they believed that it was her fault, then she was ready to leave this forest. The elder tried to stop her, but it was in vain. The elves fell to their knees and began to beg for mercy and to stay because without her, they can do nothing. The girl climbed back into the house, and Ray asked if she was all right. He couldn't even imagine what would happen to this place if the head of the elves left. This meant that they could be attacked at any moment. Ray reflected on this act on the part of the girl. Is she really ready to go to such lengths for the sake of justice? Era was now very hard to calm down. She didn't understand how they could afford it. And when she missed that moment, her status as head of the elves became nothing. Ray waited for a good moment to pop the question and asked if she really wanted to go. She replied that it was a better solution than watching their arguments. And it was obvious that they needed her help all this time. He asked where she would go if she decided to leave the village. There was one place she always wanted to visit. She was not there for only 20 years, although in reality, it is an eternity for people. If she is about 1,000 years old, then 20 years is really very little. Elves stood at her door and asked to come down and asked to forgive them. They begged to give them one last chance and they would make it right. Ray looked at her and realized that she said all this out of anger. But the elves didn't lie. She really wanted to leave. The boy was forcing her to admit that she really didn't want to. Maybe they did wrong, but in fact they needed her help and support. Aira thought about it and agreed with this opinion, although she was very angry with them.